uh, this song to be for everybody that's ever had anything going on rough in your life. The word to live. Man. You gonna praise this thing on there? It is. Yeah. We all have some battles. <coughs> Take the pain. 
pray, God, that I want your will to be done. And I think sometimes that God allows those things to happen for us to see uh, that, well, maybe that wasn't the best thing. Maybe God had a better plan and I wanted something different. A lot of times we're selfish in the way we look at things. We're selfish in the way that we, uh, in the way that we pray and the way that we live and the way that we walk uh, on this earth. We, we can be a little selfish. We're all human beings. Let's just be honest about it. Let's just stand before God today uh, uh, and, and confess our faults one to another. Uh, uh, we can all be a little selfish and we pray in such a way that we want things to happen. But God is able to do a lot more than what we can think about. God is able to do a lot more and to have a lot more power and a lot more, uh, listen, to, to, that we could see the great and mighty things that God can do if we would only allow Him to do it. If we would only allow Him to do it. You know, the Bible, Jesus said that with man it is impossible, but with God it is possible. Amen. You know what else it says? That it's impossible for us to please God without faith. It's impossible for us to please God without faith. What does that mean? Faith in knowing that He is God and He knows what's best. Amen. Faith in knowing that, uh, that we don't understand every situation. We don't understand every problem. We don't ever understand everything that's going on. I'll tell you what, as the church, we have limited God uh, because we've forgotten that He is able to go above everything that we could ever imagine. Man. We sit around in our churches and we think, we experience that, the, uh, you know, at association meeting, they were talking about all the things that were wrong with everything. Uh, all the things that were wrong with the, the churches and all that stuff. And I, you know, maybe some I agreed, some I didn't agree, whatever. But I, I think our biggest problem is that we've forgotten that we serve God. Amen. Amen. That we serve a living God. That we serve a God that's still able to save people. Yeah. Uh, that's still able to change people's lives. Uh, that's still able... You know, a lot of times the devil's got us cowered in a corner. Thing, you know, uh, well, you know, we don't want to talk about that to them. They might get offended. They might get this. They might get that. Listen. Our God is still able to save people. Amen. Our God is still able to break the hearts of the lost. Amen. Uh, the, the only thing is that we're not proclaiming it. We're not lifting up the cross of Jesus Christ. He said, if I be lifted up, did he not say this in his scripture? If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. I think sometimes that we think we're doing something uh, uh, to do this, but it's really all about proclaiming uh, the name and the life and the power of Jesus Christ. That we lift him up, we lift him high above everything else, and we say, this is the one uh, that you need to run to. This is the one uh, that is the Savior of the world. Uh, this is the one that died on the cross for you. This is the one uh, that can do all things. We get worried, and we get anxious about things, uh, and we get, we get all upset about things. Uh, uh, but Paul wrote to the, the, the Philippians that uh, he said, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. We have nothing to get worried about. You say, well, what about the state of our country? What about the, the problems that we're facing everywhere around us? What about this? What about that? Listen, what we really truly need to believe, what we really need to know in our heart, that is that God is still God. Amen. Is that He is exceeding abundantly higher than everybody else. Uh, that He is above all the things that we uh, that we uh, that that worry us, that trouble us, that uh, that we care about. He is so high above those things uh, that none of that worries Him. You know, Peter told that when he was writing to the church, he said, uh, "Cast all of your cares upon Him." But he said this because He cares for you. 
You know, we all, if we have problems, we try to find somebody that knows something about the problem, do we not? Whatever that is, medical problems, financial problems, we try to find somebody that knows how to fix the problem, amen? Well, listen, I'm going to tell you something, that we serve a God uh, that is able to fix all the problems. Amen. Amen. Uh, he's able to take care of all of us. Now, listen, I'm going to tell you something today. That does not, I, I'm not saying this out of a lack of faith. Uh, but I am saying this. Sometimes when you pray for somebody, uh, they still get sick. Sometimes uh, when you pray for somebody, the cancer doesn't go away. Uh, sometimes, uh, but listen, there are times when it does happen. There's times when it does happen. There's times of healing. There's times of power. There's times when God uh, can still save people that we thought were gone and we never had a hope. And he can still change them. But he, because he is able to do exceeding abundantly above, above all that we ask or think. We think about the greatest way that you think this world could ever be, uh, and it's still flawed. It, I, and I'm talking about in my mind. If I think, if I look around, I think how how the how great this world could be. How, if this were this way, and that were that way, and this went that way, and everything was wonderful. Uh, listen, God is still high above all of that. Amen. Amen. Because He is God. That's what we've forgotten. That nothing shall be impossible with God. He told, he told uh, Sarah and Abraham, is anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? The reason that we have proof after proof as we read through the Scripture of how God can work in mighty ways, how God can show Himself in mighty ways, is to say, look, these people were just people like me. Amen. Uh, that, that he said, uh, what was it James said about Elijah, that he was just a man of like passions as we are. Uh, but he prayed, and it didn't rain for three and a half years, and he prayed again, and it rained. He was just a man. Like you are. That's all James was saying. He was just a man, but he was a man surrendered to the will of God. Amen. Do you think Elijah enjoyed? Now think about this. Do you think Elijah enjoyed going to the king and telling him God's going to come in this place and God's going to send an army and God's going to destroy and God's going to do all these things? No, he didn't, but he was surrendered to God's will. Sometimes that we, we have a message to say that God is coming. That God will, uh, will be uh, the God also, the God of love. God, I'm going to tell you something. God loves everybody. He does. God loves you. God gave his life for you. God shed his blood on Calvary for you. Uh, but God will be God. He said, I will be exalted among the heathen. He said, I will be, uh, I will, I won't be mocked today. The Bible tells us, be not deceived. God is not mocked. What sort of man saw it, that also shall he read today. And God is still a God that says, uh, you know, a lot of people say God's not fair. God is totally fair. Totally fair. What do you mean by that, preacher? I mean, he laid it out, one, two, three, this is living. But if you don't live this way, you're on your own. If you don't live this way, you walk your own. He was totally fair with him. He said, look, I give you the free uh, free uh, will to choose whichever way you want to choose. I lay before you good and evil, he told the nation of Israel. He said, I hope you choose good. I hope you follow after me. I hope you listen to me. But if you don't, you can go the other way. He said, but you will be on your own. He told them in the book of Deuteronomy that he said... If you'll follow me, if you'll do these things, blessed you'll be. Blessed you'll be in your home. Blessed you'll be in your house, in your uh, in your work, on the way to work, in the market, everywhere you go. Blessed, I'll take care of you. I'll watch over. But if you choose uh, to go against me, uh, uh, cursed you'll be uh, uh, in your home, in your market, in your work, wherever you are. That's fair to me. How can we look at the God of the universe and say His rules, His laws, His commandments aren't fair? He made us all. He made us all.
But I will tell you this. Life is not fair. In our way of thinking. Good people suffer and, and bad people have good. All these things happen around us. And in, in, in our human mind, life's not fair. But as the old saying goes, God is still good. Amen. God is still good. God is still the God of salvation. God is still the God of love. God is still the God of, uh, of power, of strength, uh, of everything that we need from day to day. God is still that God. What we need to remember as the church is that we, you know, our greatest power is found, and I know it sounds cliche, I know it sounds like it's a, but but truly and truly our greatest power is found on our knees, whether physically or or ever humbling ourselves before God. Let me put it that way. Humbling ourselves before God, seeking his will, our greatest power is found there. Amen. And until we do that, uh, we don't have power. Until we until we humble ourselves before a mighty God and say, God, you are God. We're just uh, uh, we're just instruments in your hand. We're just uh, uh, vessels for you to use from day to day. We're just one that uh, the mouthpiece of God to tell people about the Lord. That's all we are, God. But you are God, and you're able to do great and mighty things, exceeding abundantly above all that I can ask or think. When we get in that place, you know every great revival. Uh, if you study the revivals of America, every great revival started with people humbling themselves in prayer. Amen. Say, God, what? how have we gotten this far? Lord, how did we get this far away from you? They were praying. They were humbling themselves before God. We want to turn back to your ways, Lord. Uh, we want to turn back to the uh, the ways of God. And when we do that, we can <coughs> see the power of God. We can see people change. We can see, uh, listen, the, the, the real church of God full. Full. <coughs> Filled with the Spirit of God, filled with the power of God, when, when people would, uh, would look at the church uh, uh, and it was an extension of God and they would look at them and they would respect them because they were walking with God. Amen. I'm afraid what happens is when the world looks at us now is we hear all the excuses. They look at us and say, well, if they're... If that's a Christian, I don't want to be one. If they're a Christian, the woods are full of them. We hear all those things happen. And I know, listen, folks, I, I'm the first one to tell you that none of us are perfect. None of us are and are never going to make a mistake. None of us are are, 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 are never uh, going to not say a, a bad word about somebody or so, whatever it is. Uh, that, that we're all going to have our faults. But listen, what they need to see in us is a consistent walk with the Lord. Is a consistent day after day after day walk with God uh, that we, uh, we, we, we care about each other, we pray one for another, we help each other. Uh, and when they see that, uh, then they can see the love of God shining through us. They can see this exceeding abundantly above all this world, all that we ask for faith. A lot of times I've been guilty. Uh, as a pastor, I've been praying, the Lord, this is, I, you know, I, this is what we need, this is what we need, and, and I have to stop, and I have to say, God, what do you want? What do you want, Lord? What, because I have, you know, I have, self, I have, I want to see this happen, I want to see that happen, I'm praying for this, praying for that, but I have to stop sometimes, I have to say, God, what do you want? What do you want to happen in your house today? What do you want for our church uh, uh, from day to day? What What is it that you're looking for in us uh, uh, to do for you in your kingdom? That's where we need to be. Completely surrender to God. Say, God, what do you want? 
because when we get to that point, that's when God can lift us up and use us. When Saul met the Lord Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus, he said, when he was knocked off of his horse, by the bright light, first thing he said was, Who are you, Lord? Because he knew there was something special there. He knew the power was there. He knew God was there. Who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Next thing was, What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do, Lord? Where do you want me to go? Uh, what, what is it that I need to do for you? See, when we get surrendered, when we get down, humbled, down to the floor, and we say, God, you are God. Lord Jesus, you are God. What do you want me to do? You know, I believe that the Spirit speaks to us. I believe the Word of God speaks to us and through us and through His power. And what we need to do is pray for it. Pray for it. God, where? What is it? What do you want? And I want to see exceeding and abundantly above everything that I am. To see what, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, you know, if we, uh, as a human being, as a pastor, I'm looking around and I think, man, if we could, if we could just get uh, uh, eight people on every bench and this and we'd have this number. And I, and I, don't, I don't focus on numbers. I really don't focus. But what I'm saying is sometimes as a man, we look that way. And, I, you know, we might have 80, 100 people, uh, but God may be thinking, you know what? Uh, I, I'm looking for two, 300 people for him. If we could just do this. But God says, I'm able to do it exceedingly abundantly above what you're thinking, above what you're asking for. Uh, I want to see uh, the altars filled uh, with people that are seeking God. I want to see uh, the power of God come down, and he is able to do it. Amen. More than what I think. More than what you think. See, we have got... You know, I think of Hezekiah. And I think it was the king, uh, I think it was maybe Sennacher that came against him and he said... He told the people, he sent a note to the people and said, don't listen to Hezekiah when he says your God will protect you. Don't listen to Hezekiah when he says God will come out in your defense. He said, because look around you, no other army can stand against me, and here I am at your doorstep. Don't listen to him uh, uh, when, I, uh, when, I say, when, when I'm coming, I mean business. Hezekiah took and laid it out before the Lord. He said, here it is, Lord, here's what he's saying. Here it is, Lord, here's what this king is saying against us, uh, uh, and I want you to handle it, God. The battle was won without a battle. He said he went his way back home. God brushed him away like, a, like nothing. So he's able to do above what we You know, Hezekiah was probably, he might have been praying for just for strength for the army to do battle. I don't know. He may have just been, but he said, here it is, Lord, here's what he's doing. Uh, let you handle it, God. See, we, we are listening too much to the kings of the world that are saying Christianity's dead, the church is gone, you got no influence anymore, you don't do this. Now what we need to listen to is lay all that out before God and say, God, look what they're saying about you, Lord. I want to see you do something. I want to see the, the power that you gave Hezekiah. I want to see the power that you gave Elisha when you had angels across the mountain defending him. I want to see all of this because he's able to do above what I'm thinking. Above and above and beyond all that I could ask or think, all that I'm sitting here thinking, 
Uh, you know, this is the way it can happen, that's the way it can happen. No, I'll just say, God, I, I just want to step back. I, I mean, I want to I want to work for you, Lord, but I want to stand back and I want to see what you can do, God. I want to see the power that you can put forth. I want to see uh, the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to see uh, what God can really do. Man, he can do it. He can do it. You know, you say, we, we read the Scripture... And we, we see when the church first started, and we see, oh, there was uh, thousands saved that day. There was thousands saved that day. It was added as, as many as would come to him that day. We think, well, that, that, that's nice, but that can't happen. It can happen. I think it was... Uh, the second great revival that swept through America, they were a few men started praying, and a few more started praying, and more started showing up, and God began to move. Uh, and at one time, there was, I think, I don't quote me, you may have to look it up, but uh, I think there was three thousand saved at one time. That's in the 1800s. The great revival, great awakening. When I think about that, that's in one day. That's daily. That's what God can still do. Amen. God can still do. Listen, folks, we've got to stop. We've got to stop limiting God by what we think. By how what, what we want done. What we want to see. What we we just need to release all of that and say, God, you work the way you want to work. And I'm going to tell you this, if you start praying that, you've got to be willing to step forward. If you seriously pray, God, your will be done with me in my life, you've got to be willing to step forward when he calls, because he will call. He will call, and he will give you the opportunity to serve him. He will give you the mouth to say it if you'll just say it. But let's stop limiting God by the way we want it. You know the fastest way to kill a church is to let somebody, some one person have their way. The fastest way to kill a church. Let God have His way. Let God have His way. We can see the mighty power of God. I truly believe it. I really do. Now there's days, there's days that I look around and I get worried too. There's days that I look around and I get upset too. And I might be angry about something, or I might be worried about something, or I might be there's days that happens to me too. I'm not gonna lie. But he said, Come back to him. Cast all that care on Him and have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Say, God, I don't understand it, but you do. You're still on the throne. You're still in power. I don't understand it, but God, you do. And you can still do great things. Amen. And I trust you for that today. And that's what I'm praying for you today. That's what I'm praying for this church today, that we will say, look, God, I know you're able to do great things. Above what I, I don't even know how to name what you want, God, but I want what you want. Yeah. I want what you want for my yeah. life first, for my family's life first, and then when we're in my church, uh, and then in my county, my state, my my nation. I want it, I want it to start in me, God, that I will just release myself to your will. Amen. That's a big step. We can make that step. Say, God, I just give it up to your will. What do you want me to do? Don't, don't make no mistake about it. He'll let you know what needs to be done. Amen. He'll let you know what needs to be done. What you got to do is quit saying, this is what I want, this is what I want to see, this is what I want to happen. This is what... No. Let God have his work. He can do above and beyond all that we could ever think or dream. Let Him take over in your life and in 
in our church and in and all around us. Let him have his way. Because he's able to do above <clears throat> all that we can ask or think. Not only above, it's exceedingly abundantly above. You've been limiting God in your life. It's time for us to stop. It's time for us, I'm, playing, I'm saying us, I'm raising my hand, I'm saying it's time for us to stop and just, and just totally release ourselves to the Lord. And let him show us what he can do. He will. Because he will. So I'll get a verse of the song ready. Scott, I know that I know that each of us in